Hello and welcome to the German Guy Reviews. I'm the German Guy. And welcome back, my friends, to another edition of Kingdom Hearts, a retrospective. If you haven't watched Terra Story, please do that first and come back later. But if you are lazy, here's the short version. Two young people who want to become Keyblade Masters, named Terra and Aqua, are sent on a mission to find a man named Xehanort. And there's a third person called Ventus who follows both of them. And because there wasn't enough repetition in the series already, we have to play the game three times. On top of that, there are evil creatures called the Unversed that have started appearing in various worlds and need to be stopped. For this video series, we play as Aqua, a lovingly kind young woman who was ordered by their master Ericus to keep an eye on Terra because he fears that he might fall prey to the temptations of darkness. Which is totally unfair because I was taken over by darkness like... One, two, three times maybe? And the number of times I helped villains out was like... All of the time? After all the stuff that happens in the home world, we open up in Cinderella's dream castle, where Aqua just spoke to Terra, telling him that Ventus is also somewhere out there. All alone and frightened. What if he develops an addiction and sells his body for pixie dust? In turn, he told her that Xehanort is searching for pure hearts. The reason still unknown. Meanwhile, the evil stepmother and her little brats walk home. When Aqua runs past them, she senses a terrible evil force and asks the Grand Duke who that woman is. Well, she has a lot of names around these parts. Satan's Bride, Her Royal Kindness, almost got her with my car. She follows them home and waits outside. All the while, the Grand Duke is trying to find out who the glass slipper belongs to that the fair maiden at the ball lost. Now that she is at the house, Aqua can feel clearly that darkness lives in the hearts of these people. She wants to go in and beat the crap out of this evil family for, well, being evil. But the fairy godmother stops her. It's dangerous to fight the darkness with light, my dear. Oh, bibbidi babbidi bullshit! So what you are saying is that it's wrong to help an innocent person to escape their abusive family and that light should not fight darkness even though they are natural enemies? You suck, fairy godmother. You suck at fairy godmothering. Oh no, no, I get it, I get it. All she needs is some new pumps from Prada to heal these emotional scars. Why would you advise me not to fight darkness with light? Strong rays of sun create dark shadows. Sadly, Lady Tremaine and both her daughters are jealous of Cinderella's charm and beauty. Qualities that appear to you as light. Jealousy is darkness. Light and dark go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. Ralph, what is it you're trying to say? In order to effectively help Jack at this pacifist run, the godmother shrinks us down to his size. And don't you forget, dear, by the stroke of two, you will grow back because my shitty magic only lasts so long. Think of it as a secret agent movie. You have a specific time window to get the job done. We are made small and meet Jack, who tries to get Cinderella, who has been locked away, out of her room, so that she can prove that the glass slipper belongs to her. Fun fact, in the original fairy tale, the evil stepsisters cut off some of their toes so that they can fit into the slipper. And it's not accepted for some reason. Wish they had put that as a deleted scene on the DVD. 
I am just so thankful for the subtitles in this game. Honestly, can you understand what he is saying here? Ooh, that's like ben fans. You ever meet a ben? Aqua realizes that she has to hurry up before the Grand Duke leaves. Problem is, Onverse tried to stop us. But with Aqua's help, Jack manages to get behind the wall. In the meantime, the godmother's sucky magic begins to... well, suck. And we grow back to our original size. But this actually happened at a very convenient moment and gives the young Keyblade Master the opportunity to keep the Grand Duke busy for a couple more minutes. And I have to actually agree with Lady Tremaine for once. Aqua appears like a robber in this situation. Who are you? And what are you doing in my house? I wished we had stand your grand laws in the Magic Kingdom. But who cares, it's not like any prison cell could hold her anyway. Would it be alright if I tried on the glass slipper? Hmm, I met you at the palace. Unfortunately, you are not the young lady the prince is looking for. Wait, 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 wait. Your orders were to check out every single female person in the kingdom. And you take one short look at her and you know exactly that she is not the one? How do you know that? Also, why is it so important that it is the exact same woman? The prince has short-term memory. He can't remember the face of the woman he met a few hours before. Just give him anything that looks remotely female and be done with it. Cinderella is finally set free, but Lady Tremaine sabotages her happiness once again. Unfortunately for her, Cinderella has the other slipper and that one fits perfectly. But the nasty old woman with the heart of ice doesn't want to give up just yet and vows revenge. Lady, you definitely need a different hobby. Have you tried cutting out the eyes in photographs? Shortly later, Aqua hears Cinderella scream and finds her after she has been attacked by an unversed. They know how to control the unversed now? How? I mean, if it was a Heartless, that would be okay, because the Heartless are this natural force of darkness that try to support everything that is evil. But for what the Unversed are and what they are later revealed to be, it doesn't make sense. Anyway, the awful trio is killed by one of the monster's bombs. Thank you so much, Nomura, for making any use of the garbage sequels impossible. And then we make us some pumpkin pie. Cinderella is brought back to her prince and everything is okay again. That is, until the Heartless show up in a few years and destroy the entire planet. Next up, Aqua arrives at the house of the Seven Dwarfs, who are mourning Snow White, who has been poisoned by the Wicked Queen. The young woman wonders if there is a way to wake her up, and the dwarves think the answer could lie around somewhere in the witch's castle. She bravely goes there, knowing the castle is full of monsters and evil magic. She meets the prince on her way, who wonders where Snow White could be. Aqua tells him what happened, and the prince is shocked. He wants to know where she is, and immediately goes there. In the evil queen's secret chamber, Aqua only finds the magic mirror that starts to attack her. When the fight ends, he says the evil queen has just been killed, releasing him from her magic. Back at the dwarven house, the prince decides to give his beloved a goodbye kiss, which turns out was the cure she needed. Welcome to Prince Hospital. With one simple kiss, we make all your worries disappear. Bring your old, your young, your dead. Don't believe me? Believe these totally authentic customers. I had lung cancer and then the prince gave me a tongue kiss and the next morning I pooped it all out. I had a broken leg, 90 degrees off, and as soon as the prince kissed me, it just slipped right back into its original form. I was bitten by a poisonous spider in the dick. I don't want to talk about it. Big pain, small pain, doesn't matter. We cure everything down here. Except herpes. Prince Hospital, the only cure you need is love. Please sign our anti-sexual harassment release forms. 
We leave the joyful couple and visit Aurora's homeworld. A bright light that is coming from a nearby castle makes Aqua wonder what is going on there, so she decides to investigate. Inside, Maleficent tells Ventus that Terra took Aurora's heart. But of course, neither he or Aqua believe that he could do such a thing. Aqua tries to convince Ventus to go home, completely ignoring that there is an evil powerful witch standing right next to them. And then he runs away, saying he needs to find him, by which he obviously means Terra. Water Girl turns her attention back to Maleficent, who tells her she is fascinated by the power of the Keyblade, realizing that if Maleficent knows what a Keyblade is and what it can do, it must mean she saw it in action, which in turn means she told her the truth. She throws us in the dungeon to break our will and make her her slave. We then realize that we share our cell with Prince number 5.6-C Alpha, who tells us he was locked up because he can break Aurora's curse. But don't forget, if you use the Prince method, you have to pay licensing fees. Fortunately, the three god fairies show up and break us free. See that fairy godmother? This is how it's being done. We are then spotted by Maleficent's crow and her armies try to catch us. Maleficent summons a forest of thorns, but not even that prevents our escape. The Mistress of Evil then decides to deal with us personally. See for yourself all the powers of hell! So, if Christianity exists in this universe, does that mean Jesus was a Keyblade wielder? Make it happen. Maleficent then transforms into a dragon. In a fight that, compared to the original one, really lost quite a lot of its epicness, seriously look how ridiculous her flying looks like, we manage to defeat her. That is, like in the movie, the three fairies do most of the work and we look cool. Maleficent, badly wounded, makes a little speech about how light is like stupid and stuff and then leaves. Prince and Princess kiss, breaking the curse in this world as well. Later, Aqua happens to fly behind Terra and she wonders where he is going, remembering that Master Ericus made protecting Terra from his own darkness part of her mission too, she decides to follow him. She arrives in Radiant Garden, where Onverse started attacking the city. A young Kairi is cornered by the creatures. She would like to fight them, but realizes that it would be too dangerous for the little girl. Locke would have it that King Mickey shows up, aiding her. Hurry! You gotta get that girl to some place that's safe! <laughs> you just went down the stairs five steps and then went up right back, didn't you? I don't feel safe! Or maybe there was one of those convenient fallout shelters around, I don't know. The two Keyblade wielders eliminate the threat and Mickey suddenly gets teleported away. I am Mickey Mouse. I was in this game too. Aqua can sense a very strong light shining inside Kairi's heart, which is why she decides to do the same thing Terra did with Riku, giving her the power to use a Keyblade one day, which is called the Keyblade Inheritance Ceremony. Kairi's grandmother picks her up and the little one asks her if she can tell her the creation story of the universe one more time. I almost died, Grandma, but I'm too much of a Ned Flanders daughter to care. After that has been put off the checklist, Aqua sees an enormous unversed flying towards the city. She meets up with Ventus and Terra, and as same as before, or now, this whole thing is so confusing, they fight. After Terra leaves the group in anger for being told the truth, Ventus tells Aqua that she is awful, that she has become arrogant since she was made a Keyblade Master. Ventus decides to go and look for Terra, leaving Aqua depressed behind. And I think that's enough for one day. But don't worry, I will be back very soon. The German guy out and auf Wiedersehen. Long ago, people lived in peace bathed in the warmth of light. Everyone loved the light. Then, people began to fight over it. They wanted to keep it for themselves, and darkness was born in their hearts. The darkness spread 
swallowing the light in many people's hearts. It covered everything, and the world disappeared. But small fragments of light survived in the hearts of children. With these fragments of light, children rebuilt the lost world. It's the world we live in now. But the true light sleeps deep within the darkness. That's why the worlds are still scattered, divided from each other. But someday, a door to the innermost darkness will open, and the true light will return. So listen, child. Even in the deepest darkness, there will always be a light to guide you. Believe in the light, and the darkness will never defeat you. Your heart will shine with its power and push the darkness away. I'm terribly sorry to bother you, sir. Oh, <laughs> what a well-mannered lass you are. Uh, I'd be pleased as punch to help you, if I can.